Hi everyone, in this video, we will discuss the power of visual communication design and how we can use it to express positive or negative messages demonstrated by two influential works of art that share similar characteristics, the photo Kathy Griffin holding Trump's head and the sculpture David Triumphant over Goliath. Visual communication design can be challenging for many reasons. One of these reasons is that visual communication is subjective and open to interpretation. People may interpret visual messages differently based on their experiences, cultural background, and personal biases. Because of cultural differences, people may interpret certain images and symbols differently, making it essential to be aware of cultural context when creating visual messages. Another reason is that visual communication can be complex as the message can involve multiple layers of meaning and symbolism. For instance, how do you see this glass? Do you see it as half full or half empty? And because of the ambiguity of a single glass, it is important to empathize with different viewers and clarify what you are trying to express when using this image. For these reasons, the challenge is to create a visual message that is understood yet complex enough to convey the intended meaning. And lastly, technology has changed the ways we visually communicate. Since new technologies are constantly emerging, keeping up with the latest tools and techniques can be challenging, especially for those who despise digital art. Because of our fast-paced world and heavy reliance on technology, people's attention spans are becoming more limited. As a result, visual communication needs to capture attention quickly and effectively to convey the intended message in a concise and impactful way. Now let's explore the two specimens that demonstrate the powers and challenges of visual communication design. David Triumphant over Goliath is a 3D sculpture by Italian artist Giuseppe Maria Mazza, created in the late 17th century in Bologna, Italy. Mazza was an Italian sculptor of the late Baroque period, known for his skill and ability to create dynamic, passionate, and complex sculptures. His rendition of David and Goliath showcases his mastery of the medium as it captures the moment's intensity and the character's emotions. This sculpture is a celebration of classical art and the human form. It also refers to the biblical story of David and Goliath, a narrative in Jewish and Christian traditions. It is a tale of a young shepherd boy who defeats a giant Philistine warrior with a single shot from his slingshot. This story appears in the first book of Samuel in the Old Testament, symbolizing faith, courage, and the power of divine intervention, which has inspired countless individuals and creative works throughout history. Moving on to the second specimen, we have Kathy Griffin holding Trump's head, a 2D photograph taken by American photographer Tyler Shields in 2017. As we all know, they released this image during a politically charged time in the United States, with the country deeply divided over the Trump's presidency. This image reflects the intense emotions and polarized opinions that characterized this period in American history. The controversy surrounding this photograph raises questions about the boundaries of artistic expression, particularly when it comes to political commentary. Some people defended the image as a form of political satire and creative expression, while others denounced it as disrespectful, offensive, and even inciting violence. The controversy led to a wide-ranging discussion about the role of art in politics and the responsibilities of artists and public figures in society. Due to the photograph, Kathy Griffin faced significant backlash, including losing professional opportunities and sponsorships, being investigated by the Secret Service, and receiving death threats. The incident greatly impacted her career and served as a cautionary tale for other public figures regarding the potential consequences of controversial artistic statements. Now that we know the context of each specimen, let's compare and contrast. Right off the bat, we know that both specimens use the same icon of decapitated heads, one being Goliath's head and the other being Trump's head. When we look at the difference in scale between David and the giant and David's lack of armor, these are indexes that tell us how David defeated Goliath by outsmarting him instead of killing him through strength and size. Looking at Kathy Griffin's expression and the blood on Trump's head are also indexes that tell us how angry she is about Donald Trump's presidency. Interestingly, both specimens are symbols of the triumph of an underdog over a powerful figure. However, David's sculpture is also a symbol of courage and faith, while Kathy's photo is a symbol of a strong political statement. In terms of principles and elements of design, the visual weight is distributed evenly between Kathy's face and Donald Trump's head. Even though Kathy takes up much of the space on the picture plane, there is an emphasis on Trump's face because of the use of color and the details of red paint that are highly contrasting against the plain white background. 
While more details are happening on Trump's head, Kathy's facial expression and the complementary colors of her orange hair and blue blouse help her stand out. The stark contrast between these colors creates a dramatic and visually arresting image. Meanwhile, the sculpture of David has a beautiful pyramidal composition. With its inherent sense of order and stability, the pyramidal composition aligned well with the church's desire to communicate clear religious messages and the Holy Trinity. We also get a sense of balance from the contrapposto pose of David, an Italian word for counterpose. This weight shift creates a subtle S-shaped curve in the figure's spine, resulting in a more relaxed, dynamic, and lifelike appearance. By distributing the figure's weight unevenly, contrapposto showcases the body's ability to balance and express tension and relaxation, emphasizing the naturalism and movement of the human body. In contrast to Kathy's photo's use of color, this sculpture is monochromatic, highlighting the importance of how light and shadow play on the statue's surface and texture to create a sense of depth and richness. It is also important to note that Kathy's photo is categorized as commercial, making it focus on mass appeal and a broader range of mainstream channels. It also presents an endorsement appeal since the image uses a well-known celebrity that appears credible to most audiences. Hence, it aims to capture attention quickly and effectively to convey the message concisely and impactfully. On the other hand, David's sculpture is categorized as couture since it was meticulously handcrafted for the Catholic Church using the finest materials and craftsmanship. It is also exclusive to the Baroque period, making it known for Mata's unique and artistic design. It presents a youth and masculine appeal since David is an image of youthful beauty and symbolizes independence, strength, and courage. Therefore, the sculpture is less about practicality and more about showcasing the designer's creativity, innovation, and vision. So what makes each artwork successful? There are benefits to producing artwork and only sharing it with a smaller group of people with the same values and beliefs. What makes the statue of David successful is that it was a 3D form placed during the time and at a location where people understood the context. Since people reacted to the statue during the Baroque period in a very positive manner, it influenced the way we interpret the artwork today. For these reasons, society has countlessly used the story of David and Goliath as a reference, not just as a biblical story, but from a business standpoint. In other words, the statue of David successfully ensures the preservation of its history and heritage as its story passes down from generation to generation. On the other hand, Kathy Griffin's photo was 2D, easy to access, and open to the public. Internationally sharing this photo made it dangerous as it was open to interpretation. However, Kathy Griffin's photo successfully created history which will help future artists study the outcome of this artwork and make more informed decisions in expressing their intentions. So with that in mind, why do we cheer for David but not for Kathy Griffin? David and Goliath come from a biblical story, so most people who aren't religious wouldn't think that the story is real, but rather an interesting moral story about courage and skills. On the other hand, religious people would cheer him on since it's a story about having strong faith in God. In other words, the story of David generates overall positivity regardless of your beliefs despite the icon of a decapitated head. It also uses logos and pathos to persuade the viewer. Logos is present as the statue's realistic depiction of the story appeals to the viewer's logic and reasoning since it shows David using skill and strategy to defeat his much larger opponent. Pathos is present through the emotional impact of the statue, which can inspire a feeling of admiration and inspiration. The statue's powerful imagery and depiction of David's victory is a metaphor for overcoming challenges and achieving success against all odds. Meanwhile, Kathy Griffin's photo uses pathos by presenting provocative and controversial images to make a statement about her opposition to Trump and his policies. Overall, the lack of technology in the Baroque period is a factor that influenced the way we perceive Matzo's work unlike Tyler Shields' photo. Because we know who Donald Trump is as he was the current president at the time, we quickly jump to assumption and judge the artist's intention. But with the statue, because most people today wouldn't know what the story is, it encourages us to take the time to research the context. Therefore, we try to accept the beauty of what we see. The fact that we can't fully understand this artwork makes us appreciate more as we fill in the gaps between the things we already know. In other words, we subconsciously make things relatable and universal as we try to reference them from our daily lives. And now that you've witnessed the power of visual communication design, how would you use it in your future creative expressions? Will you use it as a tool or as a dangerous weapon? Thanks for watching!